first to the war against women. We've seen it right here in Australia when women needed police protection to attend a women's rights rally in Melbourne and then in Auckland, the police protection wasn't enough and women were physically attacked as well as copying all sorts of unhinged verbal abuse. And in the aftermath, we saw politicians from both sides attack Conservative female MP Moira Deeming, who has been suspended by the Liberal Party for nine months. And right now, another woman, a leftist feminist, is under attack in Melbourne with trans activists threatening and intimidating her and trying to destroy her livelihood. Melbourne University professor Holly Lawford-Smith has committed the great sin of believing in women's rights and biological reality. For that, the tolerant trans activists and their allies are trying to have her sacked. And they're intimidating not just her, but her students. They've got sti stickers like this on campus. Let's have a look at it. It says, got the trans flag with the words, only a fascist takes feminism. Yes, that's the left for you in 2023. And in Victoria, that includes the Quislings mm. in the Liberal Party who support self-ID laws and all the other radical trans legislation Andrews has passed. Indeed, they went to the last election promising not to change one aspect of these insane laws. But back to Melbourne University where Holly Lawford-Smith is being threatened and defamed. Look at this poster calling her a fascist and telling Melbourne Uni students not to take her class. They're trying every avenue to silence her and have her removed from the university. It remains to be seen whether Melbourne University stands up to these bullies or whether it gives in to them. You'd think any university that respects academic freedom and wants to be truly inclusive would not be flying the very political, very divisive trans flag at a time when a female academic is being monstered by trans activists. But that's the state of play right now. The most intolerant, radical bullies are allowed to play the victim while being supported and promoted by every public institution, just about every corporate and the bulk of the media. That's also the case in the US, but at least there there is a real fight back occurring. Their conservative politicians in multiple states are putting a stop to the worst excesses of the trans movement, including medically transitioning children, with irreversible treatments and surgeries, including double mastectomies. But in Democrat heartland like California, the far left hold all the power. And when swimmer Riley Gaines tried to speak to students at San Francisco State University a couple of days ago, this happened. Did you hear that? Did you hear the activists taunt her for crying after they had punched her and chased her out of the event? Let's have a look at that from another angle and I'll tell you afterwards precisely what happened. So they beat her, chased her, and then they kept her hostage for hours, and yet there have been no charges, despite the abundant video footage of the mayhem. Now, let me tell you why they did that to Riley Gaines, who is a 12-time All-American swimming champion. It's because she was one of the very few athletes who had the courage to call out the insanity of Leah Thomas being allowed to compete in the women's competition. You remember Thomas, the mediocre male swimmer who identified <laughs> as female and then was breaking records in the women's competition. Not only that, but Thomas, who has a functioning penis, would sometimes expose himself to the women in the change room and when the women complained, they were told they were the problem. That's why Riley Gaines spoke out and eventually authorities did ban Thomas from the women's competition 
but for defying the trans agenda, Riley Gaines is now a marked woman. She was repeatedly punched at that event in San Francisco State University, taunted and threatened with further violence, while she and security and police officers barricaded themselves in a room for three hours. The threat of further violence was so great, police could not get her to safety through the mob. It was only after hours of being held hostage that police officers announced through loudspeakers that the gathering was an unlawful congregation and those refusing to leave would be arrested, that they finally managed to get her to safety. Even then, a huge police, police contingent was needed to get her out. Now, do you understand why women don't speak out against this? You can have a look at some of the demented abuse and threats I see daily for just covering this issue. But the hate crimes committed by the trans activists in the name of diversity and inclusion are not condemned by the media and increasingly not condemned by law enforcement. If any other group behaved like that, it would be called, I don't know, domestic terrorism. But the bullies here are portrayed as the victims. And women and men are too terrified to speak out, but those with courage will not be silenced. And that includes Riley Gaines. She's more determined than ever, as she told Tucker Carlson. Three hours. Why didn't someone with a gun come and bring you to safety? Because they were terrified. They were scared to put their hands on these people because they know what these people are capable of. Um, these people yelled obscene, violent, vulgar things to both myself and the officers, and the officers, I could tell, didn't feel comfortable putting them in a position that would mean they do their job, um, which is a really scary, chilling thought. But what this means for me, this does not deter me. This assures me that I am doing the right thing. This will not silence me when they want me to be silenced. It just means I need to speak louder. It's been two days now since that attack, and thus far, there have been no arrests. I'll leave the final word to Riley Gaines, who earlier this morning posted this. Imagine if the roles were reversed and a group of white conservatives ambushed someone within the LGBTQ community, physically assaulted them and held them for ransom for three hours there would be arrests and repercussions for the perpetrators and administration who allowed this.